as we all know, the president will be addressing the nation on the state of our nation here in about three hours. Now, for the first time in his second term here, and as many are saying, possibly a different president will hear tonight. Our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman, he's in Washington, and he joins us now live for more. Andrew? Well, Rich, the three buzzwords that I've been hearing all over Capitol Hill today are jobs, the economy, and bipartisanship. Of course, the two parties have vastly different approaches to jobs and the economy. That is putting a little bit of a strain on efforts for bipartisanship. And if you thought the war of words between the two parties might take a night off for the State of the Union, think again. President Obama isn't setting any expectations for a State of the Union address tonight. We'll find out tonight. In his annual address to Congress and the nation, the president is expected to outline an agenda to grow the middle class and grow the economy. The middle class is the engine that drives uh, this country forward. To do that, the president will call for new programs and new spending as a way to stimulate growth, and Republicans are already firing back. Earlier today, a feisty House Speaker John Boehner told reporters off camera that the president doesn't have the guts to make tough choices about the deficit because he won't take on the liberals in his Democratic Party. Other top Republicans echoed that charge. Another litany of left-wing proposals with plenty of red meat for the president's base. I hope my Republican colleagues will give his vision the consideration it deserves. The partisan fight will center on spending cuts in the economy, but it'll be gun control that will likely spark the emotional moments tonight. Attending a special guest of the First Lady, the parents of Heidi Pendleton, the Chicago teen who was gunned down in a park just days after she was in Washington performing for the inauguration and sprinkled throughout the House chamber nearly three dozen people who have been personally affected by gun violence. Stand by. Q. Q. And as we continue here, everybody's favorite game on State of the Union Day in Washington is playing prognosticator. We asked a number of lawmakers from across our region what they expect to hear from President Obama tonight. I'm looking for a very positive speech. I think he's laid down the gauntlet. If you, if you watch since the election, this president is not going to back off. Uh, he wants to have consensus. On the other hand, I mean, this is the same thing that President Bush asked for in 2007 in his State of the Union address. And we got very, very little uh, cooperation. And then what happened? He painted a very pretty picture in 2007. And yet what happened was it didn't turn out too well in 2008. I expect to hear a focus on, um, on building and stabilizing the middle class. I expect to hear a focus on investing in increasing our manufacturing capacity, dealing with our infrastructure needs, which is a proven job creator, uh, focusing on, on higher education, access to higher education, but also focusing on the importance of early childhood education. Uh, I'm sure he's going to talk about uh, sensible gun safety legislation. I think you're going to hear the president uh, deliver a positive uh, jobs and growth agenda, keep the economy moving, but even faster, and uh, get people back to work. Uh, gun safety. Uh, we are in the impossible place of losing 25,000 people a year to guns. Of course, what they are expecting to hear is one thing. What they would like to hear is something entirely different. We asked the uh, same group of lawmakers if there were any subjects that they would like the president to address tonight that he might not. Take a listen. I want to talk about manufacturing. I think this was one of the pillars of the speech last year. I think this is very critical to the economy growing. Manufacturing is important. In fact, one of those pillars uh, I, I sponsored as a bill in the Congress uh, to uh, make it in America so that we provide incentives for those manufacturers who keep jobs here and provide work for American people rather than those corporations and companies who have sent jobs overseas and still under the law now get an incentive from the government. That is absolutely ludicrous. I uh, hope he talks about immigration. I uh, hope he talks about some of the foreign policy challenges that we have, most notably now, right now, North Korea uh, and Iran. Specifically, you know, I've co-sponsored the Made in America Jobs Act with Senator Gillibrand. This would uh, spark new manufacturing in the United States. We can make products in the United States again, create good middle-class uh, wage jobs so that people can support a family. Uh, that's what I'd like to see him talk about specifically. I don't know if he'll have that specific proposal in the speech. Uh, beyond that, I, I think it's very important that we focus on economic growth. That is job one, two, and three as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I carried a 
small rifle in World War II and uh, with a lot less power and a, a lot less accuracy than the weapons of today. So, And I'm joined now by Congressman Jim Himes, Democrat from Connecticut's 4th District, Fairfield County and beyond. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Happy to be here. You know, listening to some of what we are expecting to hear from the president tonight, a lot of it sounds similar to what we've heard in previous states of the uh, State of the Union addresses. Do you think it's going to sort of be some repackaged Obama, or are we going to get more of what we heard from him in the inauguration, the more progressive Obama that everybody was talking about? Well, I've heard the White House describe this as uh, act two of the same play. So I think the themes are going to be uh, uh, intertwined. And, and look, you're going to hear some things that probably you wouldn't have heard before. I know, uh, or uh, I should say, I strongly suspect he's going to spend some time on gun safety, which, you know, before Newtown wouldn't probably have made it into the speech. But you are going to hear some things that are, you know, perennial, important themes. Uh, you know, how do we educate our kids so that they're competitive, so that they're starting businesses, so that they're good employees? How do we, you know, fix our infrastructure? You talk to business people, they'll tell you our infrastructure is crumbling. These are not things that, you know, are passing fads. These are very real issues, as is, by the way, and I don't mean not to say the deficit and other stuff, but, you know, we've got serious problems that are true over time, and he's going to touch on those. You know, when everybody talks about the uh, the lack of harmony in Washington. They point to the chamber in which you serve, the House of Representatives. It seems to be the, uh, the example above all. Uh, are there still deals to be struck between the two parties? And if so, what might they be? Yeah, look, I think there are deals to be struck, as we saw in the last month or so. Uh, look, in the last month, this very uh, polarized chamber got a debt ceiling deal done, which involved some new revenue. Look, Republicans hadn't voted for new revenue in 20 years, uh, and they did that uh, to, to their credit. You know, they sort of played the, you know, they, they had the negotiation. Uh, we got the Sandy Bill passed, which was terribly important to my area and your area in New York. Um, there are areas where I think there is really room for deals. Immigration would be at the top of my list. They understand how politically important that is. Uh, you know, education is probably another one. Other areas are going to be more contentious. Is the president's tone and how he approaches the Republican Party tonight going to have an impact in how those deals and if they can get struck? Are there some sensitive years out there, you think? Well, I, I think tone is less important than when the doors close, what really happens. You know, does the president offer up meaningful and fair? It's going to be fair if it's going to appeal to guys like me, reform of Medicare and Social Security. If he does that, I think he will find that the Republicans are newly, I wouldn't have said this six months ago, but the Republicans are newly willing to negotiate with him. So it's less about tone tonight than it is about what happens in the days to follow. Finally, a number of lawmakers tonight are bringing guests that are victims of gun violence. You're not an exception to that. Can you tell me just a little bit briefly about your guest tonight? My guest tonight is Katrina Murphy, who is a mother uh, of a three-year-old child who was caught in a crossfire in Bridgeport, Connecticut. This child was shot, thank God, uh, went to the hospital and is okay today. But I did this because uh, she's from my district, but also because while Newtown appropriately, you know, destroys all of our hearts, Every day there is violence in our communities, and Katrina Murphy represents that kind of violence that, we don't, that doesn't quite get the headlines. All right, Congressman Jim Himes out of Connecticut, Democrat. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again after the address tonight. That good. That's the latest from here on Capitol Hill. Rich, let's send it back to you in the studio. All right, Andrew, check back in in a little bit.